Hi everyone, it's Professor Primitin, and this video we're going to talk about the double angle formulas. So the trigonometric identities that we're going to consider in this section are consequences of the addition formulas that we discussed in the previous video. The double angle formulas allow us to find the values of the trigonometric functions at 2 times x from their values of x. And as we're going to talk about in the next video, the half angle formulas relate the values of the trigonometric functions at 1 half times x from their values at x. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the double angle formulas to find exact values and how to use the double angle formulas to verify identities. So let's talk about the double angle formulas. The formulas provided below are immediate consequences of the addition formulas from the previous section. So the theorem, the double angle formulas, the double angle formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are as shown as follows. Sine of 2 times x is equal to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. So notice why it's called the double angle formula for the sine function. Instead of just sine of x, you have sine of 2 times x, and it's equal to 2 times sine of just x times cosine of just x. And you can obtain this formula by using the addition formula for the sine function as follows. Sine of 2 times x, well if it's 2x, it's really x plus x in the argument of the sine function. So you can use the addition formula for the sine function to find a formula for sine of x plus x. So it's sine of the first term, so sine of x, times cosine of the second term, so cosine of x, plus sine of the second, so sine of x, times cosine of the first term, so it's cosine of x. So you have sine of x times cosine of x, plus sine of x times cosine of x. Well, that means you have two sine of x, cosine of x. And so that's what's called the double angle formula for the sine function. It's obtained from the addition formula for the sine function. The double angle formula for the cosine function, there are three different versions. Cosine of two times x is equal to cosine squared of x, subtract sine squared of x, or it's equivalent to 1 subtract 2 times sine squared of x, or is also equivalent to 2 times cosine squared of x, then subtract 1. So let's see why the cosine function actually has this double angle formula. Cosine of 2 times x, let's do it the same way as we did the sine function. Let's use the addition formula because 2 times x is really x plus x as the argument of the cosine function. So cosine of x plus x, the addition formula for the cosine function was cosine of the first term, so cosine of x, times cosine of the second term, so again cosine of x, subtract sine of the first term, sine of x, and then sine of the second term gives you sine of x. So notice that the first term is cosine of x times cosine of x, that's cosine squared of x, and the second term is sine of x times sine of x, that's sine squared of x. So that gives us the first relationship. Cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x subtract sine squared of x. Now the other two forms for the cosine of 2x, the double angle formula, is obtained by using the Pythagorean identity sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. So if you take cosine squared of x subtract sine squared of x, if you replace cosine squared of x with 1 subtract sine squared of x obtained from the Pythagorean identity, then you'll have the second identity. 1 subtract sine squared of x subtract another sine squared of x will give you 1 subtract 2 sine squared of x. Or, let's say you replace sine squared of x with 1 subtract cosine squared of x using Pythagorean identity, then you'll have cosine squared of x for the first term, subtract the quantity, 1 subtract cosine squared of x, replace for sine squared of x, and so this will simplify to cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x after you distribute the negative sign through the parentheses, you'll have 2 cosine squared of x, and then negative 1 times 1 will give you negative 1 for the second term. So each of these three are what's called the double angle formulas for the cosine function. It could be cosine squared of x, subtract sine squared of x, or 1 subtract 2 sine squared of x, or 2 cosine squared of x subtract 1. And then the double angle formula for the tangent function, tangent of 2 times x is equal to 2 times tangent of x in the numerator, divided by the quantity 1 subtract tangent squared of x. And this is obtained from the addition formula for the tangent function as well. Tangent of 2 times x can be rewritten as tangent of x plus x, so you have x plus x as the argument of the tangent function. And remember the addition formula for the tangent function, tangent of x plus x is equal to tangent of the first value, so tangent of x, plus tangent of the second value, so again tangent of x, divided by 1 subtract tangent of the first term, so tangent of x times tangent of the second value, which is also x, so tangent of x. So in the numerator you have 2 times tangent of x, and the denominator you have 1 subtract tangent squared of x. And so that gives you the double angle formula for the tangent function. So example 1, we're going to evaluate an expression with trigonometric functions. Given the following information, evaluate the following trigonometric expressions using the double angle identities. So we're given cosine of theta is equal to negative 2 thirds, and theta is between pi over 2 and pi. So that means that theta is actually in quadrant 2. So number one, we're going to find out what is the value of sine of 2 times theta. So in other words, the double angle formula is going to be used for the sine function. So sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta using the double angle formula for the sine function. 
And since we know the cosine of theta value is negative 2 thirds, we just need to find out what is the value for the sine function of theta. So when you use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1, and we can solve for sine of theta to find out its value. So isolate sine squared of theta on one side of the equation first. So subtract cosine squared of theta to the right side of the equation. So sine squared of theta is equal to 1 subtract cosine squared of theta, and then take the square root on both sides of the equation to get sine of theta by itself. And so sine of theta is plus or minus square root 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. And since the angle is in quadrant 2, we know the sine function of theta will be a positive number. So that means sine of theta will be positive square root 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. Since cosine of theta is negative 2 thirds, we can make that replacement inside the square root. So sine of theta will be square root 1 subtract cosine squared of theta, which will be 1 subtract the quantity negative 2 thirds all squared. So if you simplify, you'll find out that sine of theta is equal to squared 13 all divided by 3. So now going back to find out what is the value of sine of 2 times theta, sine of 2 theta was 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So that's 2 times sine of theta we just found out was squared 13 divided by 3. And then cosine of theta was given to us as negative 2 thirds. So if you multiply 2 times squared 13 divided by 3 times negative 2 thirds, you'll find out it's negative 4 times squared 13 all divided by 9. So that's the value of sine of 2 theta. So number two, let's find out the value of cosine of two times theta. So this time we're going to, have to use the double angle formula for the cosine function. So cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared of theta subtract sine squared of theta. Since we know the value of cosine of theta and we also know the value of sine of theta from the last problem, we actually can just use this formula for cosine of two theta. So cosine of two theta will be cosine of theta was given to us as negative two thirds. So we'll have negative two thirds in parentheses, that's all squared and subtract the value that we found out for the sine of theta using Pythagorean identity was squared 13 divided by 3. So it'll be squared 13 divided by 3 all squared. And so if you simplify, negative 2 thirds squared will give you 4 ninths, and then subtract, squared 13 divided by 3 squared will give you 13 divided by 9. And so 4 ninths subtract 13 ninths is negative 9 divided by 9, which is equal to negative 1. So cosine of 2 times theta is equal to negative 1. And then number three, if we want to find out the value of tangent of two times theta, we can use the identity for the tangent function. Tangent of two theta is equal to sine of two theta divided by cosine of two theta. So notice we need to use the double angle formula for the numerator and denominator because it's not just tangent of theta, it's tangent of two times theta. So the argument of the sine function and the cosine function are also the same. So now we can use the answers that we got from parts 1 and 2. Sine of 2 theta was equal to negative 4 squared 13 divided by 9. And we just found out that cosine of 2 theta was equal to negative 1. So the denominator will be negative 1. And so tangent of 2 times theta is equal to 4 times squared 13 divided by 9. So establishing identities using the double angle formulas is performed using the same method that we use with the addition and the difference formulas. You want to choose the more complicated side of the equation or the identity, and you want to rewrite it until it matches the other side of the trigonometric identity. So example two, we're going to use the double angle formulas to prove an identity. Establish the following trigonometric identity using the double angle formulas. So we want to establish that sine of 3 times x all divided by sine of x times cosine of x in the denominator is equal to the right side of the identity 4 times cosine of x subtract secant of x. So let's begin with the left-hand side since the left-hand side of the trigonometric identity actually contains double angle formulas that can be simplified. So the left-hand side of the trigonometric identity was sine of 3x divided by the quantity sine of x times cosine of x in the denominator. Well, we know that we can rewrite sine of 3x as a sine of a sum. It can be sine of 2x plus x. So 2x plus x is the argument because that actually adds up to 3x for the sine function. And so the numerator is really the addition formula for the sine function. Sine of 2x plus x is equal to sine of the first value or the first term, so sine of 2x, times cosine of the second term, so cosine of x, plus cosine of the first term, so cosine of 2x, times sine of the second term, so you'll get sine of x. All divided by, the denominator just stays the same, sine of x, cosine of x. So now notice you actually have the double angle formula for the sine function and also the cosine function involved in the numerator. So let's rewrite sine of 2x. Sine 2x is equal to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x using the double angle formula. And we also have multiplied by cosine of x for the first term. Then we also have cosine of 2x. Let's use the double angle formula for the cosine function. It's cosine squared of x subtract sine squared of x. And that needs to go in parentheses because we need to multiply by sine of x also in the numerator for the second term. And the denominator will just stay sine of x times cosine of x. So now we need to simplify a little bit by removing the parentheses in the numerator. So we have sine of x times cosine squared of x. And we also have sine of x times sine squared of x. So you'll have two times sine of x cosine squared of x because you have cosine of x times cosine of x in the first term. And then the second term becomes sine of x times cosine squared. That will give you sine of x cosine squared of x. Subtract sine of x times sine squared will give you minus sine cubed of x. 
So in the numerator, you have 2 sine of x cosine squared of x plus sine of x cosine squared of x. Those are like terms because they both have sine of x and cosine squared of x. So you actually have 3 sine of x cosine squared of x. And then the last term is unlike, so we have to keep it the same, subtract so sine cubed of x. And the denominator stays the same, sine of x cosine of x. So now let's rewrite this one fraction where we have two terms in the numerator as two different fractions with the LCD being sine of x times cosine of x. So let's rewrite the first term was 3 times sine of x cosine squared of x divided by the common denominator sine of x cosine of x and then subtract the other term with sine cubed of x and keep the denominator the same sine of x cosine of x as the LCD. The reason why you want to rewrite this into two fractions is because you can actually simplify a little bit further. 3 sine of x cosine squared of x, you have the sine of x cancel out from the numerator and denominator because you're multiplying it in the top of the fraction and also the bottom of the fraction. And then one of the cosine of x's will cancel out from the denominator and the numerator. And so what's left over will be 3 times cosine of x. Whereas the second term, you have a sine cubed of x divided by sine of x. That'll simplify to just give you sine squared of x. And then the cosine of x is still in the denominator. So it'll be divided by cosine of x. So now you have two fractions, and now you can rewrite this to have the same denominator of cosine of x now. So cosine of x is the least common denominator, or LCD. So let's rewrite both terms so that they have a common denominator of cosine of x. That means you need to multiply the first term by cosine of x to get a common denominator. So you have 3 times cosine squared of x divided by the common denominator of cosine of x. And then the second fraction doesn't need to be changed at all because it already has the denominator of cosine of x. So it'll stay minus sine squared of x in the numerator, and in the LCD is cosine of x. So in the numerator, you have 3 times cosine squared of x subtract so sine squared of x, and the denominator was cosine of x, the LCD. So now let's change the sine squared of x using the Pythagorean identity again. 3 times cosine squared of x will stay the same, but then sine squared of x can be replaced with 1 subtract so cosine squared of x. And make sure that goes in parentheses because there's a minus sign in front of the sine squared of x. So now the negative sign needs to be distributed through the parentheses, so you can actually find out the correct coefficient. So you have 3 times cosine squared of x, subtract 1, and then plus cosine squared of x, all divided by the LCD, which was cosine of x. So you have 3 cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x, that's really 4 cosine squared of x, and then you also have a minus 1 in the numerator, all divided by cosine of x. So now let's do the same trick that we did a little bit earlier. Let's rewrite this one fraction to be two fractions with the LCD, or common denominator being cosine of x. So you have 4 cosine squared of x divided by cosine of x, and the other fraction, second fraction, will be negative 1 divided by cosine of x. And so now simplify. 4 cosine squared of x divided by cosine of x. One of the cosine of x's will cancel out, and you'll have 4 cosine of x left over in the first term, or first fraction. And the second term, 1 divided by cosine of x, is really the secant function, because the secant function is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So you have subtract secant of x, which was exactly what we were trying to prove or establish in the trigonometric identity. This is the right-hand side of the trigonometric identity. In other words, sine of 3 times x divided by sine of x cosine of x was equal to 4 times cosine of x subtract secant of x. So that proves or establishes the trigonometric identity. We start with the left-hand side of the trigonometric identity, and after a series of algebra steps and also trigonometric identities, we actually obtain the right-hand side of the equation or trigonometric identity. So let's skip ahead a little bit. So now we're going to talk about how to evaluate expressions involving inverse trigonometric functions. Expressions involving trigonometric functions and their inverses also arise within calculus. In the next example, we're going to show how to evaluate such expressions. So in example 6, we're going to simplify an expression involving inverse functions. Write the expression sine of the argument 2 times cosine inverse of x as an algebraic expression in terms of x where x is between negative 1 and 1 including the endpoints. So we actually can use the double angle formula for the sine function because it's sine of 2 times inverse cosine of x. So the double angle formula for the sine function can be used. Sine of 2 times u is equal to 2 times sine of u times cosine of u. And we're going to replace the u with inverse cosine of x. So that actually matches for the double angle formula. So we'll have sine of 2u is 2 sine of u cosine of u. So that means sine of 2 times inverse cosine of x can be rewritten as 2 times sine of inverse cosine of x, because that's the u, times cosine of u, that would be cosine of cosine inverse of x. Well, with this second expression, we have cosine of cosine inverse of x. Cosine and cosine inverse are inverses of one another, so they can undo each other or cancel each other out, and you just get x for the second factor. But we need to simplify this first factor. It will be 2 times sine of inverse cosine of x, and then the second factor will just stay as x. So remember how we do these. We call the inverse trig function theta an angle. So we let theta be the inverse cosine function of x, which is the inside function, which means that if theta is equal to inverse cosine of x, that means cosine of theta is equal to x. And we can always rewrite x as a fraction by placing it over 1, so it would be equal to x divided by 1. Well, with right triangles, the cosine function was adjacent divided by a hypotenuse. 
So that means we're going to call the adjacent side x for our right triangle, and the hypotenuse will be length 1 in the right triangle. So our right triangle, theta, will be in quadrant 1, and so your adjacent side will be x, and the hypotenuse length will be 1. And so now we need to find out what is the opposite side from theta to find out the length of side b. So use the Pythagorean theorem. So you have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which will be x squared plus b squared is equal to 1 squared because 1 was the length of the hypotenuse. And so if you solve for b, you'll have b is equal to square root 1 subtract x squared. And b is positive because it actually is vertical distance above the x-axis. So now we can go back to the original problem. We have 2 times sine of cosine inverse of x. Well, we're calling cosine inverse of x theta. So it'll be 2 times sine of theta, and then the x will just stay x. And so we're trying to find out what is sine of theta in terms of this right triangle. Well, the sine function is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side we just found out was square root 1 subtract x squared, and then the hypotenuse was length 1. So 2 times sine of theta times x will simplify to 2 times square root 1 subtract x squared divided by 1 times x. So that simplifies to 2 times x times square root 1 subtract x squared. So this is an algebraic expression for sine of 2 times cosine inverse of x, where x is between negative 1 and 1, including the endpoints. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talk about how to use the double angle formulas to find exact values, and also to use the double angle formulas to verify identities. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about the half angle formulas.